morning, BookTube. Welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. So I thought I would give you guys an update on what's been going on so far this month. So, um, I ended up DNFing Sisters of the Winter Wood. It's, it's interesting, and I like the concept of it, which is these two sisters who, they are the heirs to a family of shapeshifters, and the the shapeshifter, the animal shapeshifting is symbolic for their religious faith. So it talks a lot about interfaith marriage in this. Um, and it's basically these, these two sisters, one of them is a swan, so she's very graceful and very beautiful, like very, like delicate and thin, and she's just free-spirited and lyrical and whimsical in her way of thinking. In fact, the author wrote her parts in a poetry format, which is one of the criticisms I, one of the criticisms I have, or at least one of the things I don't didn't really like. Um, and I will get to that in a minute. And then you have the other sister who is she can transform into a bear, and she's more like she likes like food she's a little of a bigger girl um she has darker more brownish features um she's a bit awkward and these girls their parents are calling away from home because their father's father their grandfather is dying so he must go see him because he will be the next a rabbi in the family because their their family her father's their father's family is Jewish and their mom's family is Christian and so he is called away and so forced because they're afraid of how they want to protect their children from their families because their families were very much against them their parents being together and they also and there's also the dangers of they they're the heirs of their families. It's like they're thinking that their families will want to take their children away and raise them in the life of the bear and the swan. And also there's the fact that each one of them will have someone to mate with. You know, of their own kind. So the girls, so the parents leave them there and the girls are basically left alone to take care of themselves. And they are like eight and like 17, 18 years old. So, like, they're not, like, super young to be taking care of themselves. But then they have always had their parents. And so the, the rest of the story is, like, them trying to live their lives on their own, take care of themselves, provide for themselves. But the one who's the swan, L Lalea, I don't know if I'm saying her name right or not, she is wants to dismiss this family secret and live her life and have fun and flirt with boys and stuff like that, even though she probably has a maid out there somewhere. And Libba, the one who's the bear, she is very much more cautious and very protective of her sister and does not think it's a good idea. But she also is, you know, she's still a teenage girl, so... She's drawn to a boy in their village, but neither. But she also knows that neither one of them can be with those boy, with any of the boys in their village, because of their heritage and the fact that they can shape shift into animals. So this novel, although interesting, like the concept is interesting, it was kind. Of, it was very slow moving. Now I have like I'm not totally against books that are slow moving. But I have to be more engaged in the plot to really appreciate the slow-moving book. And I was not that engaged in this plot. Especially because it started to feel very, like, YA sentence like And I hate to say this because I know, like, I have, um, I have, you know, my best friend Terry. I've been trying one of, she's in one of my best friends. Um, I've been trying to get her to read, be more open to why, but she's always saying that because she's, like, mid-30s, maybe even late-30s, I, I don't, I can't remember the moment how old she is, but, oh, I can't relate to YA, and 
there are, and I, I hate to say this, but there are things I've noticed in YA that I can understand why people find them irritating and don't like them, and they're tropey and cliche. Now, tropes aren't necessarily a bad thing. Cliches are more of a bad thing than tropes. But, and I'm noticing some of them in this book. Like, it focuses on a lot on these girls finding boys, and it's like, I don't care about that. I care more about how their struggles with the fact that they, one of them can turn into a bear and one of them can turn into a swan and the religious persecution they're going through, which it's in there because, like, you know, Lilea doesn't want to be in this town because they're still, they're still persecuted for their Jewish heritage. Not as badly as if they were living where their parents lived, but, or more so, but still, I mean... They're still being, like, treated. Like, they're, they're still different, considered different. So she wants to leave and go to someplace like America. Lippa is perfectly content here because she's, like, like her parents, she's thinking, oh, that will never happen here. But she's also thinking, you know, maybe America would be better for us. And so it is a little bit in there, but it's mostly focused on, I feel like it's going more in the direction, and to be fair, I didn't get very far, I didn't even give it the halfway point, so maybe it's not fair of me to say that, to make those criticisms, but it felt like it was going to the territory where it was focusing more on, like, forbidden romance and stuff like that, which I'm not entirely against, and I guess I should have known going by the, the, the inside flap, it does kind of mention forbidden love or like, oh, these guys are showing up and, you know, they're dangerous and blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I should have figured that, but I was just drawn in, I guess, like everybody else, by the beautiful cover and the concept of them being a wolf, uh, being a bear and a swan was really cool, too. Okay, I'm gonna put this down because my, this part of my hand is kind of, I feel pressure on it. And it, it was also, like, in, granted, I know that characters can be, characters can be annoying, and it doesn't necessarily stop me from reading a book, but, oh my god, Leia, I just want to shake her, I want to smack her on the back of the head, I want to think, or as I sing streets, whack her on the back of the head, but I should have said smack her on the back of the head. She was just so annoying and irritating and naive in her naivety, and, like, I mean, I don't like when people necessarily dismiss a character because they're annoying, but she just drove me nuts with her. I mean, both of them were incredibly naive. And, which, I guess they're 18 and I'm 30, so, I mean, granted, I still think I'm kind of naive. I still am naive myself. But, I mean, I'm definitely not as naive as they are, and, I'm like, it was like, I feel like Lilia kept, and I understand she's a vulnerable teenage girl, she's absolutely terrified to find out, and she just found this out, but she was, like, in denial of it, and completely in denial, and just would rather, like, flirt with boys, and it's like, and it just drove me crazy, her constantly idiocy, and it's like, girl, grow up, stop acting like an immature little brat, it just... And then there was, okay, this is going to kind of spoil a little bit, but there was one scene in the beginning of the book, like, that kind of explains why Leia is more swan, is, like, why there are two different animals. Because Leia has a different father. And it was kind of a weird situation, because it's like, the mom... The mom and dad fought so hard to be together because they loved each other so much. And it was like, who cares if we're different? We just love each other. We just want to be together. And they fought so hard, but their parents were so set against it. But they, you know, believe and decide to run away. But then all of a sudden, like, the mom's swan mate shows up. And she is all of a sudden, like, you're my mate. You're so beautiful. I'm drawn to you. I love you too, even though I'm just senior. And maybe what, like, I think what the author was trying to say is that, oh, that your mate has such a hold over you, has a strong power over you. You will immediately fall in love with them, even if you barely know them, because they're your mate. You're destined to be together, and you're you connect. And like, I guess that's what 
the author was trying to say that that no matter what, their mom was still connected and still bonded to this guy and would still love him despite that. And then, you know, she comes to him willingly. But then the father shows up and thinks that she's being forced against her will and essentially raped. So he kills the guy and he's so distraught and upset because he actually murdered someone. He turned into a bear and actually murdered this guy. And, you know, it's terrifying the fact that they commit the action itself, that he act, the action of murdering someone, whether they deserved it or not, is what killed, what devastated him. And so, and then she gets pregnant with her daughter, Lilea, and that's why she's a swan. And it just was like, it kind of, it was like a little weird for me. It was like, and then, uh, but then afterwards I was thinking about it and I realized something that, it's funny that this is kind of put in a light of, oh, he's invading into their lives and she's, like, first of all, I get the impression that this is like, almost like they have no free will that they can't control, that they have no free will they can't choose. Which makes me wonder why, makes me think, well, the, like, it's like on that one book, too, I can't remember, I want to say it was Elliot Brooks, but I don't, I don't know if it was her or not, but one of the booktubers I like was saying how they don't like soul, the idea of soulmates, they don't believe in it, or they don't believe in, and so, and at the time, I was like, well, I believe in soulmates, and, but then it, I started realizing that it's like, I guess for some people it can seem like they're taking away the person's free will, if this person they're meant to be with, they're destined to be with this person. And of course, maybe she meant, like, the whole plot line of, oh, we're destined to be together, or you, we can't help it, we're drawn to each other, I'm only meant to be with this person. Maybe they meant it like that. Like I said, I don't, I want to say it was Sonia Brooks, but I don't know if it was her who said that. Um, but, so, which led me to thinking about how, like, in this story, it's seen as, for me, it's seen as kind of weird, and it's like, the mother fought so hard to be with their father, she loved him so much, but then all of a sudden, like, this other guy shows up, and, oh my god, I love you, I'm drawn to you, and you're so beautiful and everything, and I'm willingly going to give myself to you, and so it's kind of painted in a bit of a weird, negative light, but then... It like then you have authors like Sarah J. Mass, and she uses the concept of mating all the time. Like, you know, Resand is Freya's mate, and in the first book, you know, we assumed that what's his name? That um, I can't remember his name. The guy that no one likes anymore. Um, Tam Tamlin was. Oh, was Freya's mate, but then you realize that, oh, Rhysand is, and at the time I read it, I was like, oh, they're mates, it's so romantic and so beautiful, but then, it's like, it's interesting, you know, how you got, if you, it depends on how you put it, like, how you make it seem, how the author displays it, the idea of someone being your mate. And I could see in some ways it could be seen as, oh, take away the free will because, oh, this person can't choose to be with this person because, oh, they're drawn to this person. You know, this person, there's their mate, their soulmate, their destiny. And it doesn't matter. They're just destined to be with this person even if there's other people involved. And I also would think it would be really interesting if there was a story, a novel, whether it's YA or maybe it would be good if it was a YA where... Oh, you have this person, they're being told that you're my mate, we're destined to be there together. But then, all of a sudden, like, yeah, they may be drawn to this one person because they're their mate, but then all of a sudden, they, another person shows up. And it's like, they don't choose, they fall in love with them and then don't want to choose their, the person they're mated to. And maybe by the end of the book, they don't end up with their mate, they end up with the other person that they actually love, that they chose to love. So, it would be a love triangle, and I know a lot of people don't like it, like Trump lo like love triangles, but I think it would be very interesting is what if the girl does not choose her mate, does not choose her soulmate, she chooses the person, the other person that shows up and then she falls in love with them, but they're not, they're not her mate, they're not destined, so it would be kind of a mixture of, like that, and saying, oh, this person, 
you're not meant to be with this person. You're meant to be with this person, and they're more your kind of person than th than. But I just think it'd be interesting is what if our main character does not choose the person that they're told is their mate, their soulmate. What if they choose someone else they fall in love with? I think that would be a very interesting story. Like, but so the other thing I was thinking about was. Like, I mentioned that the Leia's parts are told in kind of a poetry format. And I understand what the author is trying to do with it. I think I understand, like, she was trying to say that, oh, because the Leia is a swan, so she's more lyrical in her way of thinking, more whimsical and magical and free-spirited. It wants to be free and fly and stuff. So I guess the, I think the author was trying to be, like, that's why she's putting her, her, her parts into, like, poetry. And to me, and I'm not the only one I've come to realize, is it's just very, like, it's more like basically breaking up the paragraphs into stanzas. And there's no rhyme or rhythm to it. It's just, you know, I mean, it has actually, I think another one reviewer on Goodreads put it perfectly, that it's like as if you're reading it and then you hiccup and then you read the next sentence and then you hiccup. You have the, hic you have the hiccups. Like, that's how you're... So I thought that was a funny way of, because I was actually in my review, I was having trouble explaining what it was, and I don't think I did a good job in the final review I posted. And, it, like, so I, I get what the author was trying to do. And I do like the deckled edges. I like the, I'm one of those people, one of the many people like the deckled edges, and like, the stuff are so beautiful. And someone said it reminded them of the Hazelwood, which, yeah, I guess, with the, this border is, like, woodsy. I know that's, but I definitely like the Hazelwood better than this one. And it's just, it's, it's, it's a beautiful story, and maybe I'll like it. Um, but I didn't. It just, it was hard to get into, and I was, again, feeling the pressure of, you know, oh, I got to return at least, I want to return at least one book to the library by the date that my books are due back. I don't want to have to recheck on all the books, because first, it's a lot to carry all these books. And second of all, it's more of a, it's like a guilt thing that I feel like, oh, I have to have one book done, one book that I'm actually returning. So, even though this is DNF, doing that because even though yes I know there's nothing wrong with DNF it's good to DNF I mean don't waste your time on a book you're not enjoying but I have DNF so many books this year it's like I don't want to DNF another book so that's why I'm making sure to work and finish Gulliver's actually read and finish Gulliver's Travels which while I'm here let me go ahead and talk about that one so this is kind of another slow moving plot but it's still inter it's very interesting it's very amusing but I would probably still I mean I would still give it three. I already know that I'm still gonna give it three stars on Goodreads. I probably won't read it again. I just wanted to be able to read it because it was one of the books that we were gonna read, going to read for my British literature class, but we never got to it. We spent again, we spent so much time in Canterbury Tales and we threw we started on we read Hamlet at the last minute and we ended up reading it by ourselves and we there was they she did put on the movie, but then no one would shut up, and I actually wanted to watch the movie, but everyone kept talking, you know, and at one point, I did give some people the stink eye, but then I don't want to have to deal with the people commenting to me and mocking me and laughing and snickering at my giving them the, the glare, the stink eye, so I tried to ignore it, but, um, it is interesting, it's like this guy has gone to on four different voyages he is a physician in train he's a physician but he gets separate in but then there's like his boat crashes and most of these people die except for him and he ends up on these mysterious I different islands the first one is Lilliputian or Lilliput with all the little people the second one is the one with all the these giants um, these giant people, and I don't know what the fourth, what the third and fourth are gonna be. I did not know about the third and fourth actually. I knew about the Lilliputians, the Lilliputs, 
and I knew about the Giants, but I did not know about the, there's one that's run like an island that's all horses, and then one that's like, where the people that are like obsessed with science and stuff like that, and math, and like arithmetic, I think. Um, it's in, it's very funny, like, I did not realize that they, that they included the pee scene that is in the Jack Black movie. I didn't realize that was actually in the book. And there's, it's, but it, the, my one thing that kind of makes it not as appealing is the fact that it's, like, there's so many things that I would wish were shown to me, were described to me, not told to me, and that's what this book does. It's kind of like this Gulliver's diary, and he's just telling people what happened. He's telling him about the, these events and telling him how he did these things, how he solved, and what happened to him. He's telling us experience, his experience, but we're not actually seeing them when we're in those experiences, which kind of which bugs me. And maybe that has to go with the the whole satire and everything that the, because this is a satire on British society. And I don't know if it's supposed to kind of be a commentary on American society, too. But I know by the end of it, he's not going to be happy going back to his his world. But it's, it's entertaining, it's amusing. And I'm glad I'm reading it. I'll be very proud to say that I've read it. And I do want to watch the, the miniseries. Like, I've seen the Jack Black movie. I know, I can understand why people have a problem with that one. Because I think that one was not as well loved. I mean, they basically only took the part with the Lil, with Lilliput. And they kind of, more of a, made it more of a farce. Not just a satire, but really just more silly. And I personally had no, I liked it. But I hadn't read the book. I didn't have an attachment to the book. And, um, I don't think I have those on. I should have them on. I have my, my wireless headphones charging. And, um, but I know there's a mini series that came out in the 90s by Robert Palmey Sr. He's the same guy who did The Tenth Kingdom, Alice in Wonderland, I think. Like he does a lot of those. He used to do the all those fantastical mini series. I want to do. I want to watch his version of Gulliver's Travels. So I don't know the problem is it doesn't come on TV. So I almost unless it's on Netflix or something, I'm gonna have to probably actually buy it. But um. But yeah, and it is a quick read. It doesn't take that long because the first part, the first two parts were, are only like eight chapters each and they're only a few pages long. I mean, some pages, some chapters are longer than others. And there's part three is I think 11 chapters. But again, I don't see them being that long. And I don't know about part four yet. I don't know how many chapters. I imagine there's 11 chapters in part four or eight chapters. So probably not that long either. There might be twelve chapters in part three. I don't know. I don't have to double check that. But it's it's entertaining. It's fun. It's amusing. It's kind of an adventure story. But with an adventure story, I want to see more being shown to me rather than told to me. And that's what this does. It's very much focused on the tell telling you, like you know, as if you're reading someone's diary or journal or whatever you want to call it. I think I like the term journal better. I don't know why. Um, but actually that's, when I was, I used to write, when I was still watching the show Once Upon a Time, one of my, one of the things I was working on was Belle's Diary and Robert, in Rumpel, I used to call him Robert, Rumpel's Journal, because I felt like journal associated with that with males, and diary associated with women, but, although men keep diaries. I feel like, though, I would need to read, if I ever wanted to do that again, I would, I would want to do it better. But anyway... So, yeah, it's, but it's, it's, I think, you know, I don't think it's the worst, but I don't think it's that, I don't think it's a bad book. I think it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't read this particular classic. It's very, it's a fun classic. And, I don't know, I might one day introduce this to my nephews. 
you know, I still might want them to check it out because they might, you know, be, it might be, in fact, the, the, the way it's written it might make it easier for them to read it. Okay, so another wintry, more wintry book I'm still working on and I'm almost done with it is Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire, which is the origin story of the Nutcracker. And I just real I just learned yesterday that there is some LGBTQ representation in this book. Like, um so I thought that was that was kind of I think people would appreciate that. So I don't know, Gregory Maguire, I feel like he's not for everyone. And sometimes I admit there were times I was reading it, and maybe because there was too there I, there was too much distraction going on with this book. But there were times when I got a little confused with the writing. But mostly, I'm I real I had no problem with it. I real I love his writing. I really like his stories. They had more depth, and I also like how they kind of. They're not just the basic story, but they add, they have a political undertone or a religious undertone, historical undertone to his stories. Um, I think there is more religious undertones in this one. But the main, our main character, Dirk, that's his name, by the way. I think the first time I talked about this book, I said that I didn't know his name. But I think at that point I did know his name. I just didn't remember it in the moment while I was filming. But our main character, Dirk, he is incredibly frustrating. He's frustrating, but in a good way. Like, you know, he's human. He's human. He's human. He's someone that, because, you know, something happened to him in the beginning of the book that he's trying to forget. Something magical happened to him. So he's put in the back of his brain and he's forgotten about it. And he's like, oh, it didn't really happen. And he's seeing a kind of a doctor, or like a therapist who's helping with the wife of the woman, the mother of the two boys he was taking care of, who's kind of being a, like a, a babysitter towards, she's a woman who sleepwalks, so he takes her to his, his, he takes her to a doctor, and the doctor, something, he puts her, he uses a hypnosis technique on her, and then the technique affects Dirk, and he says some things, and the doctor decides to, oh, you, maybe you need to be, have some, see me too. And Dirk is like, no, no, I'm fine, why are you, I'm, I'm not your patient. He, he doesn't, which I think a lot of them, there are a lot of people that react like that, if you, someone's, like, especially something that's scary that happened to you, or something that is unexplainable, your first instinct is to, you know, is a defense mechanism, and no, it did not happen, you're crazy, I don't need your help, I don't need problems, why are you trying to, and it's like, it's their fault, they're, they're making me think this way, they're getting inside my head, and that's, like, your first, I feel like that's your first instinct, that's, like, a defense mechanism, and that's what Dirk, I think, mean, that's Dirk's reaction to this stuff, Dirk, no, I, nothing happened, why are you doing this to me, you're trying to get inside my head, now, because you suggested this now, I'm thinking about it, and I'm questioning if it really happened. And But it's also the same frustrating, because that's the reader. You know it happened. I mean, we read it. I mean, there is a possibility that maybe it could be one of the situations where, you know, you think it happened, but did it really happen? But I'm pretty sure what happened, the magical thing that happened did happen to him. And I also, like I said, there's LGBTQ rep and with, I'm pretty sure Dirk himself is, either he's gay or he's bisexual. I think he's bi, because I think he was, he's been, he's been attracted to girls. And there's a young boy who is, a young man, um, a guy his age, who's a cellist, that's how he first meets him. And Felix... And he likes Dirk, but Dirk is a little resistant to him. Like, or at least he doesn't want to admit that he likes Felix too, and that he has feelings for him. Or that he's at least attracted to him. Um, so I thought that was, that was kind of cool that they had, that he went in that direction. Um, 
Especially because, like, I don't normally seek out, like, I don't read romances that are, you know, say, LGBTQ crap. I just, if I like, like, as I said before, if I like the plot, I don't, like, I don't seek stories out with that kind of plot, with, that happen to have that kind of romance in it. You know, if I happen to like the plot, then, yeah, I will read the book, and if it happens, that's a, that's a plus. You know, that it's in there, you know. Because I definitely think it's important, because the, and, but, um, I don't like the speckled edges, I think the fact that speckled edges, I like that. Um, so it is, like, Greg, you know, one of the things about his writing style is, he said, not everybody likes it, because, but he's an author who writes very much, like, his writing feels like fairy tale writing for a modern audience, like a modern fairy tale. It's, that's what it feels like when I read his. In mostly, most of his stories are fairy tale retellings. Like I mean, like even his Wicked Year series, because I feel like Wizard of Oz is a fairy tale. Um. But yeah, if you're. Now, I will say this. It's not the... It is the origin story of the Nutcracker. But, I mean, in fact, the Nutcracker doesn't come until later in the story. But there are references throughout it. Um. Throughout the story. That, you know, refer... That kind of make you think of the whole Nutcracker ballet. But it's mostly focused, I think, on the story of Clara's uncle. Who gave her the Nutcracker? But now the net when I finish what um I'm almost done. I'm almost up to once I finish with this section. I'm almost done with this particular part, and then after this part is the part where we get to the origin story. Part three is the actual story of the Nutcracker and the Mouse King. So, if you're expecting, so don't expect it to be like the whole Nutcracker ballet. It's more, you know, Germany during this time in how the creator of the Nutcracker and their, Clara's uncle and his life, for his life before he became, you know, he was, before he became Clara's uncle and gave her the Nutcracker. But it's still worth a read if you're, you know, if you're a fan of the ballet, I think you should check it out, you know. And I think only unless you have seen the ballet, or at least are, or if you're not a fan, you at least like it, or you've seen it and appreciate it, I think you should still check it out. It may not be the same as the original Nutcracker story, it's more historical fiction. You know, it's still, it's, it's connected to it. Um... Okay, so like I said, I am working on, so I've been working on those two, and now, um, okay, so here, okay, some of my, a little mini, a tiny book haul, really tiny, I mean literally a tiny one, like, so I don't know if I showed you this, but, so, I have a problem, I can't go to the bookstore without buying at least one book, I, I can't do it. You know, I know for you guys it might be cute and amusing, but for my parents it's probably not so amusing. Um, but, so I ended up getting, first of all, I ended up deciding that I was struggling, like, I couldn't find, like, there were a lot of classes that were, that were bought, apparently from the bookstore. So I ended up getting... But I did see this. Now, I do have a bind-up of Volume 1 and 2 of Sherlock, of Sherlock, um, Sherlock Stories. And it has that one in there. So I think it has all of the, all of Conan Doyle's novel, like, short stories and his, some of his novellas. Two of his two novellas, or whatever you want to call them. Um, but I ended up buying this because it is kind of hard to read those, and I can't travel with those. As I always say, the reason why I get mass market paperbacks is even if they're not as pretty and they can easily fall apart, and, um, they're small. 
they're easy to travel with and they're cheaper. So I ended up buying this one, which is the Hound of Baskervilles. I used to say a baker's doll, but it's actually Baskervilles. Um, and this is a haunted, kind of a haunted house mystery. Although, as you know, if you are familiar with Sherlock Holmes, you know it's not what it seems. It's not going to be, you know, there's like going to be a supernatural. It's going to seem like it's supernatural, but then it's really not. It's going to turn out not to be supernatural. So it's like like how on Scooby-Doo, you know, they always try to solve them. They try to solve a mystery, and it seems weird and creepy and supernatural, but then it's like, oh, actually, it's Mr. So-and-so wearing a costume. So I feel like Sherlock Holmes is kind of like that. And normally I'm not big on the whole, like, whole idea of in the soup, like, it seems supernatural, but then you find out by the end of the novel, oh, it's not really supernatural. Normally I'm not a fan, but I'm a fan of Sherlock Holmes and his whole arrogance and thinking and knowing everything and being like, you're all so dumb, you couldn't figure this out. And his whole skills of deduction are really cool, too. So, that's the only reason why, even if it's a story that it turns out there's, it's not really haunted, it's actually some guy in a costume. I, I just like Sherlock Holmes in general. So, but this is a, this will be a lot easier to read and travel with. And then once I read this, hopefully I'll have the desire once again to watch, to read the other books. I was about to say, watch the other books, but no, read them. Read the, the short stories. So, I don't know if I showed you this but oh I think I did actually yeah I did so under the western sky I, I think I did show you this one um and these are modern library I started I'm I guess I'm starting to collect some modern library collections um so in I think in the video I said I picked this because you know it has to do with Russia and during the revolution or pre-revolution but I also bought the Magnificent Emberson and it got a, it's a winner of a Pulitzer Prize. I did not know that. But so when I accidentally first saw this, I thought it said Andersons, and that's my last name. But no, it's Ambersons. Um. And it's one of those stories about a family, a, a family, an American dynasty. And I I kind of I like those I like stories about families and the Amer you know they're a family dynasty. This really I always like that kind of stuff. That's why at first I wanted to read um why I read roses and then I was gonna read the other one. What's it called? The see the prequel to that one. Um, I can't remember. It. It's actually the title, it's named after the house itself, their their plantation. I can't remember what it's called. It, it will probably come to me, though, after I finish filming. Um, so I went into buying yesterday. Okay, so we went, I had to, I did some Christmas shopping yesterday. And I went, my first instinct is to always buy people books. <laughs> so... Um, we went to the country bookstore to buy some, some of my family members' books from there. And, of course, like I said, I have a problem where I can't go to the bookstore without buying at least one book for myself. And, like I said, for my parents, it's not exactly as cute, but for you guys, it might be funny and cute. But I ended up getting this one, and I made sure I picked one that was I did not put on my Amazon wish list yet. Although, I'm pretty sure I don't have to worry about it. Well, I mean, I guess with maybe with my sister. Like, she might still be shopping for me or something. But, I remember hearing a lot about this. This is an adult novel, Gods of Jades and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. And I've heard a lot about this. It's, um, I think it's Indian mythology like a djinn and stuff or or like he's a god djinn or maybe he's just a god but from what I know it's basically this girl 
it's kind of a Cinderella story at first. Not the romance part, but she's the whole, she's living with her step family who kind of treat her like Cinderella. And they have a museum that she, you know, helps out working at. And then somehow she accidentally releases this god-like creature. And he wants revenge against his brother. So he's she offers to help him find his brother and get his revenge. But the problem is she is also connected to him. So his life is literally in their each other's lives are literally their lives are in each other's hands. And there's this whole thing about how the more he spends time with her and the more he's on Earth, the more he becomes human. But I think like because he's connected to her, it drains the life out of her or something. Something along those lines. Something like that. Um, but either way, I remember it. I really, it sounded really interesting. It was hard not to narrow it down because, like, there was a YA book, Cursed, that I was tempted to get. I And there was also Ruin of Kings I thought about getting, which is a fantasy, another an epic fantasy. And then the other book I grabbed that I was thinking about getting was, um... Oh, Binding, which is about a guy who discovers that he's a bookbinder, and his books that he binds will hold can hold memory people's memories that they want to forget. Um, so that premise also intrigued me too, especially as a reader. You know, I think a lot of readers would be, a lot of us would be a would be intrigued by that premise. Um, but I was like, you know what, this is the book, my, this was my goal, this is the book I intended to buy, so I'm gonna stick with that book, and I ended up narrowing, I feel very proud of myself, narrowing it down, and got this one. But I did get a gift for someone, and then I got myself a pair of socks that were really cute, they had little books on them. I did, and actually, my mom pointed out that the colors of the socks match the colors of this book, too which was really funny, and I'll be right back. I'm almost on my video anyway, but I'm going to go. My dog is scratching from my room. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's, it's, it's the girl dog, Sophie, who is a bit of a chicken when it comes to other strangers in the house. Which I guess is a good thing, but, you know, I would... Rather her bark and growl at a stranger. Especially if he if the stranger's a threat. Which in this case this guy obviously isn't. But he's like a friend of my dad. I think he's gonna he's the one he's probably the one who's gonna accompany him when he goes fishing. But um also um which oh, you know what? I totally forgot. Um I may I may as well go show you those socks too, because I wanna show you some of the stuff. I treated myself with other than the book. So there were a couple that's dangerous to go shopping because so these are the actual these are the socks. books. It was between these or there were some socks that said um, I love to read not you so you not so much <laughs> which I thought that was really cute but I decided to get these instead and like my mom's like kind of they kind of match my book similar colors and then so we went to we went to a sporting goods store which I think this is my dad doesn't watch my videos because that's where we got his gift. Um, we went to a sporting goods store and they had a sale on socks. 
um, like you could buy a certain brand of socks. You can buy one, get one free. So my mom got a pair and I got a pair. So I got these, which I really liked the colors of these and they're really warm and fuzzy. Um, so I probably will bring these ones with me when we go to my sister's home, which hopefully I'll get that time off. So we're going to, um, going to have an after Christmas Christmas at my sister's place because I mean my nephews I can't not have Christmas with them so but every year they go back and forth either they spend Christmas or Thanksgiving with like they spend one holiday with us and then the other holiday they spend with my brother-in-law's family and then vice versa the next year okay so the other things I treated myself with were so, I we went to a place called Tuesday Mornings. It's kind of like, um, I'm trying to think of what it's, I guess it's like a smaller, it's kind of like fast, like, it's kind of like, okay, it's not like Best Buy. I can't think of it. I know it's, it has a similar title to Best Buy. Um, oh, Big Lots. It's kind of like a Big Lots, but smaller. Like, it's a Big Lots meets, like, Michael's or something. Um, and they had a puzzle section because every year we, or more like my parents will make the puzzle, will make the puzzle and maybe I might add, try to put a piece in there. But most of the time I don't because I don't, I'm not a very patient person. Um, but I used to, my mom, I spotted this one, well, I spotted it first, and then I was like, well, no, because they're not, my family is not going to be as interested in it as I am. Oh, actually, no, I think I showed it to my mom, because I was like, oh, look, mom, this is so cute. But I didn't think she would actually suggest, oh, you should buy it. Um, but I ended up buying it, and it's this. This. Um, it's a, it's Beauty and the Beast, you can't tell, in case you can't tell, I know the colors are different than, like, the Disney movie, but, it's a Beauty and the Beast puzzle, so, um, my mom suggested, like I said, I didn't think she would, but she suggested I just go ahead and buy it for myself, and now, unlike the rest of my, you know, unlike the family, the puzzles we do as a fan, quote unquote, as a family, because I don't really participate, um, we, I'm probably going to keep it and I want to collect them all because there's actually, it's a series. So there's two Alice in Wonderland ones and then there's a Cinderella one. I feel like they should have a Sleeping Beauty one too. I think they should do that, a Sleeping Beauty one and a Snow White one. I think that would be perfect. And they should do all the Disney characters. But I thought that was cool. I, th I think this is kind of cool. Um, so also, okay, so I like having I like, like a calendar or a planner every year. So, um, and unfortunately, the calendar I had was not staying on the cork board. For some reason, it kept falling. So I just told my mom, you know, I want one that I can put on my, I can just sit on my desk. That won't matter if I put it up. But, so it was. But I ended up seeing some planners. So I ended up picking up this one. This 2020 planner. Which I know which has a peacock on it. This was one that. I remember my sister had had a peacock themed wedding. And I, I like peacocks. I think I still like peacocks and think they're really pretty. I like the, the color. Um, and it matches my teal aesthetic in my room. Although I'm trying to not do that so much. But it has like the calendar. It has a, um, has the mini calendars in it. It has these big calendars for each month. But then it also has like... So it has these as well, you know, like like in your agenda book at work. I mean, when you go to school, with um, a to do list on the side. Because I don't. My only thing about this is that 
same time, I don't do a lot of stuff. Like, I just go to work, you know, and my, you know, when, like, I don't have a family. I don't do a lot of chores except for cleaning my room occasionally. Um, so that's the only, my only hesitancy, but I like collecting, I like these, I like, I like these things, I like collecting them, especially when they have, because it's like a journal, and it, I just realized last night, I just realized before I went to bed, that this actually has a little pocket here, so I don't know what you would put in there, maybe like papers or something, like, and it also has a notes section. And there's one more section here. And that section is really long, which I guess is a good thing. Um, and then also has a to-do list, which will probably I will probably turn it into my TBR list. Um, and I like that it has these little circles so I can put little check marks in there as well. See if there's anything else. Oh, that's it. Oh, and on these, it also has, like, notes at the bottom. Right there, see? It's up there, and then the uh, top priorities for the week. Um, although I probably won't use all this stuff, because I, what I really would love to have is a bullet journal that has, like, I like the the dot ones, but I think I would like one that has like, kind of like what they have in those book boxes, where it's like you can, you have a section to write the title, you can write a summary, a little section as a summary in it, um, you know, like, like it has all that stuff already in it, I like, I like that, and I would love to have something like that, um, Unfortunately, I'm not done with mine, so my mom would probably, like, you don't need to buy another one right now. So, um, so one, I got one more thing to show you guys. I also ended up buying this as well. It's a throw, which I really like, which I like how soft it felt, and I have one of those stupid little baby things. Is that one of those? One of those, you know how those glass things. Let me see if I can. Where's it? One of these things. It's like this little little plastic thing that sticks out that kind of holds the tag in. But anyway, I saw this. It's a. I like the color because I have because as you know I have a lot of teal and grays in my room. So it's like you know what I want something. That has a different color. So my mom was like, you know, it's not that you know it's not that much. So why don't you get it? And she's like, it's not that much if you want it. You know, and I like that, this color. I like that it's, you know, this orange color. And it can still go in my room because it's, um, you know, this kind of goes well with. In fact, this was actually the teal and orange color was actually the colors for my high school. So, I really like it's really, it's very soft. I like that. No, you got it. If you're gonna get a blanket, it has to be really soft and comfortable. So I think, although going to South Carolina, I might not need it, um, because you know you're going farther south. But I might bring with me on the trip to Virginia as like an extra blanket, but or something like I can carry with me upstairs, or just at least have it in the car. Okay, I unfold it, and I will have to refold it, but that's okay. I want to show it to you guys. So, that's a little bit of an update, and also kind of a little bit of a shopping haul. 
Um, so hope you got your reading. As always, I hope your reading is going well. I hope you got, your lives are going well. I, um, did you get all your Christmas shopping done? If you celebrate Christmas, we'd love to know. Um, and I hope you're enjoying your reading, and I will talk to y'all later. All right, bye.